A new federal report released says that suicide rates among U.S. middle school students has doubled between 2007 and 2014. To shed some light on this shocking statistic is licensed psychologist and CEO of the Technology Wellness Center, Dr. Lisa Stroman. So, I, you know, I, I wish you were here to talk about better news, but this is a truly shocking statistic. We use that word too often, but doubling in such a short period of time. What, in your opinion, is causing this massive increase when you're talking about middle school students and suicide rates? I see a lot of it based on technology use, that they're exposed to it over and over again, and they don't really have a break from it. 24 hours a day, they don't ever have time to kind of recoil, reset, and recharge themselves. I mean, you make such a great point. Think about it as a kid. They have to be on, and they're being judged all day as they're doing their social media and interacting. It was and, and if it becomes a negative thing, then that really would wear you down. Exactly. It's hard to deal with even something like that as an adult. So when you're thinking about trying to deal with it when your brain isn't developed yet, that's like... Yeah, so average age that kids get their first technology device, typically a cell phone, is now six in the United States. Oh, my God. How old? Six. So six. Six years old. So a lot of parents, you know, post all of the school shootings. They want to have access to their kids. But the realities are that it's causing them more time with technology, pulling them away from interpersonal relationships, empathy, understanding that, how to interact with others. And they're getting constantly this negative data from friends, judging them, making fun of them. What can a parent do to prevent their child from going down this path which, God forbid, could end in them harming themselves. First of all is to talk to the kids about what policies and rules you have about technology. I think I'm at schools all the time. I had a 1,000 kids the other day asking them. 75% of them raised their hand, said that either themselves or a friend had talked about suicide. 75% of these kids. And these are kids that are in the inner city of a school, 29 different languages. Like, these are not kids that should all have cell phones and have the stress in their lives. So, and when I ask them, how many of you in this room have a contract with your parents or sat down and understand what the rules are? Less than 10% raise their hands. So first and foremost, you have to have those rules and guidelines with your kids ahead of time so that you have an open policy to have a conversation with them. And parents have to be parents. I think a lot of times the kids are in control. That's what I see in my office. The kids are the ones that are calling the shots. And so I really counseled the parents. I was like, you're in charge. You get to make this decision, <laughs> but at you know? The, at the same time, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. You should have the password of your kid's phone. You shouldn't let them download apps unless you've allowed them to. And every single internet service provider has a family program. So you, don't, you can buy some of the programs out there that are online monitoring, but every single internet service provider has a program to protect the kids online. And I think it's important for parents out there to know that there are places now like the Technology Wellness Center that if you are struggling with your children and you think they're being bullied online or they maybe are bullies, there are more resources now. If you do suspect your child is being bullied or is under emotional distress, visit our website for more resources on how you can get help. Um, Dr. Stroman, thank you so much for being with us.